so there is a rotation along with the lead. Very, very important. And the only way you're going to get that rotation is to hold the club light. Doesn't mean you're loose, it means you're light. Now, this isn't a very big swing. I've got a longer club, and now since I'm not up to the ball the way I am with a putter, otherwise the club would be like this, now it needs to sit flat. That means I'm going to be farther away. That means my hands are now going to be lower to accommodate the lie angle on this golf club. So I take my normal grip, in case you've had a putter grip like this, and there are some good players that try to putt these shots. They get here like this and they putt. See all these bends I've got here? I got a bend here, I got a bend here, I got a bend up here, bends over in here. But what are they doing? They're still leading, just like they do when they putt. They're still leading, but I find it easier to lead when my left arm is fully extended. So when I set myself up, once again, my lead arm is fully extended. My right hand is lower, so my right shoulder is lower. I feel, and this is a critical part too, I feel my knees moved an inch forward. In other words, you can see how my knees are level here. But the minute I do this, I move them forward, this one gets high and this one gets low. So my left side is high, my knees are level, now I move forward. That kind of sets me. I'm not stiff and tense, but I do have my body tilted slightly like this. Because what that does is it accentuates my left arm being in front. And that's important to me because I want to feel my left arm leading this club. I don't want my right to think for any moment in time that it's in charge here. I want it to be on the club, holding it light, but not in charge. So, if I'm going to that last flag down there, you can see my setup. My feet are a little to the left, but my shoulders are square this way. That puts my left arm out in front. If I had my feet going where my shoulders are, now I'm kind of in the way here, so I don't do that. If you were going to toss a ball, would it be easier to toss it like this or like this? Of course, when my body's out of the way, it would be easier to toss the ball. So when you're, when you're getting up there to chip this ball, my feet are a little open, my shoulders are square. It kind of gives me this set, and the reason I want my shoulders square and my feet open is to feel my left arm and hand out in front. A critical, critical thing that you will see good players do. Because if I'm like this, you can see my right arm is straight and extended, and my left arm is bent. Well, that's backwards. That's backwards. I'm telling my brain subconsciously that this is the one that's going to do it. And what happens is when this one gets in charge, it wants to push. And the minute it pushes, I lower. And the minute I lower, I can hit the ball or hit the club into the ground behind the ball, or I can bottom out too soon and come up and top it. It's real easy. See, I'm lowering and my club is coming up. Now that would drive most people nuts. How could I be lower? and the club misses the ball. Simply because I'm bottoming out way back here, bottoms out, now it's coming up by the time it gets to the ball. How do you beat that? You beat that by leading the club. Now there's no reason to lower your body when you lead the club with your lead arm because the push, the push tries to support, your, your body tries to support the push by lowering. That's an issue. Pushing the club makes this angle disappear. Now I've made the club go faster than my arm, it bottoms out too soon, or I can stick it right into the ground. That's where all those bad shots come from. So, holding the club light, left side high, see how my left arm is in front, my knees are flexed, I feel my weight on the balls of my feet, not on my heels. When you get your weight on your heels, it's too easy to be moving forward. If you've ever shanked a ball, there's where it comes from 99% of the time. Back here, way out there. So when you get rocking chair feet, that's your problem. You got your weight too back on your heels. And when it's back on your heels, it usually straightens your back too much. So now you're really top heavy to your heels and your back is so straight here, you can't get to the ball. So then what do you do when you go to hit it? You move forward. And the minute you move forward, you take this club 
instead of being lined up at this ball and coming through at this ball, now when I come down, I'm going to hit it here. And the only way you shank it is to hit it here. So that's telling you you've moved out one inch at least to go from the center of your club to the hosel. Disaster. I try to cure that with that white board out there most of the time. First I will put a ball up here like this and say, okay, hit this shot without touching this ball over here. Because if you do that, you'll never shank it. And then when they start hitting that ball, I need more intimidation. So I go to the white board. And I put the board there so that it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch away from the end of their club. It's amazing how fast that cures them. Amazing. And with a full shot, oh my gosh. Now they're so afraid of that board, all of a sudden they hit a good shot, you're not gonna push out. So they find ways to not do it. You gotta get that into your melon up here that you don't wanna go forward with it. And most of those issues are posture related. And the other one that ruins those shots is too much tension. When your arms and hands can't move and your body can't move, you usually try to use your upper body to try to do that and that's what gets you out forward. Remember, this golf swing is controlled by your hands and wrists and arms. Your body's a platform to swing your arms from. Most important. And I can prove that to you because I can hit the ball 85% of my all out distance on one foot, out of a chair, or on my knees. 85% of my all out distance because the speed producers are in your arms and hands. Look at how my body's moving to support my arm and hand. It's not leading my arm and hand. Here's a little thing you might want to remember. When this club is moving a lot at that end, look at how quiet it is at this end. The minute I start moving a lot at this end, it slows that end down to nothing. You cannot move fast at both ends. One end has to stay quiet so the other end can move quickly. You as a human being have to move with the flow. So by minimizing the amount, this is why Jack Nicholas had to learn how to keep his head steady. Jack Grout, his teacher, used to hold him right by the hair, and Jack said he lost a few through that process. But the steadier you can be, the more steady you will be here and the more leverage you will have to swing through. But if you're moving all over the place, now you're going to lose a lot of speed. Well, it's no different on a shot like this. I want to stay a relaxed steady, let the club swing back and through, and feel it going through. Now, this shot becomes very, very difficult until you learn the sensitivity of it, of holding it light and trusting the club to swing. A seven iron on a short shot like that one, or especially one like this, where you have to take, take a very soft swing and just barely get it to the green and let it trickle, that takes a lot of practice, a lot of practice because most people hold the club so tight they can't feel that. So, you're better off using your putter when you can. For sure you're better off using your putter.